My first day at my current job, I took the network down. It was literally my first day. I didn't have access to anything yet, and I didn't want to just sit there looking unproductive. So I'm looking around, trying to find something useful to do. I then notice that everyone has a little Cisco 2960 switch on their desk. Extra ports for provisioning gear, which is totally normal in network shops. And sitting on my desk is an unplugged one. So I do what any eager new network engineer would do, and I plug it in. The switch finishes booting, and almost immediately I can tell something's wrong. People start asking if the internet is acting weird. Heads start popping up over cubicles, which is never a good sign. That desk switch that I plugged in had a lower spanning tree priority than the actual route for that VLAN. Spanning tree looked at my little tiny desk switch and basically said, all right, cool, you're in charge now. The VLAN reconverged, traffic paused, and people definitely noticed. I realized what was happening, panicked, and then unplugged the switch, which, of course, caused another spanning tree reconvergence. So, yeah, two outages on my very first day. That's when I learned this lesson the hard way. Spanning tree doesn't just protect you from loops. If you don't control it, it will happily reorganize your entire layer two topology around the wrong device. So here is the core problem. Redundancy is good. Single point of failure is bad. So we add extra links between switches, which is correct network design. But Ethernet has a dirty, dirty little secret. Ethernet frames don't know when to stop. There's no countdown, no expiration date. They just keep going like a group text that should have died hours ago, but someone just keeps replying, lol. So when you accidentally create a loop, broadcasts just go around forever. Switches flood them out every port, which means one broadcast can turn into two, then four, then eight, and your network explodes in about 20 seconds. I've seen it. You've probably seen it. This isn't theoretical. Spanning tree exists to let you have redundancy without loops. And here is the cool part. Spanning tree doesn't remove links, it doesn't delete cables, and it doesn't shut anything down permanently. It just decides which path should be active right now. It logically blocks certain ports to create a loop-free topology while keeping those ports ready as instant backups. If a link fails, the blocked port wakes up and traffic keeps flowing. That is freaking magic. At high level, this is how it works. Spanning tree elects a root bridge, which becomes the reference point for the entire layer two topology. Everything else figures out the best path back to it. The election is simple. Lowest bridge priority wins, kind of like golf. And if there's a tie, the lowest MAC address wins, which is not like golf. <laughs> By default, every switch has the same priority which means if you don't configure this, the root bridge is basically random. And random is a terrible way to run a network or a company. Once the root is chosen, switches prefer faster paths back to it. Slower paths are avoided and anything that would cause a loop gets blocked. And remember, in most Cisco networks, this happens per VLAN. Each VLAN builds its own spanning tree. That is huge because it means you can intentionally split VLANs across different paths and actually use your redundant links instead of leaving bandwidth idle. That's the algorithm. You don't need to know every internal detail to understand why it works. Now, let's talk about where spanning tree causes real pain in production. The first big one is the wrong root bridge. If you don't manually set it, some random access switch in a closet that no one even knows where it is can end up running your entire network. Traffic takes stupid paths, latency goes up, and performance suffers. The fix is simple. 
you manually set your root and secondary root on the switch where the VLAN's default gateway lives. Basically, wherever the SVI for that VLAN is configured. That gives you a consistent, predictable place for your root bridge instead of letting it just float around. That first day outage is exactly why one of my first projects at this job was fixing spanning tree priorities across the network. So a desk switch could never become a root again. Another common issue is topology changes. Every time a port flaps, spanning tree reacts. Mac tables get relearned or aged out and traffic takes a hit. Modern implementations handle this better than they used to, but flapping links are still bad news. This is why unplugging things just to test it is how you make enemies pretty quick. And then there's the rogue switch problem. Someone brings in a cheap home switch, plugs it into the wall, and it starts sending BPDUs. If that switch has a lower priority, it can become the root. Now your enterprise traffic is flowing through a $50 plastic switch from Best Buy, powered by hopes, dreams, and wall art from 2009. I've seen this happen more than once. Again, you don't need to memorize commands here. The takeaway is that spanning tree needs to be intentional, not left to defaults. Doing it right means you decide where your root bridge lives. You protect access ports so random switches can't take over and you design redundancy without chaos. Let me show you why this matters. Picture three switches with redundant links. Physically, there's a loop. With spanning tree enabled, one port blocks and the network is stable. If the primary link fails, the backup path activates and users never even notice. Turn spanning tree off and create the same topology and CPUs spike, broadcast storms hit, and the network becomes unusable in seconds. That is the difference. And here's the takeaway. Spanning tree isn't flashy. It's not new, it doesn't get hype, but it's one of the most important protocols running in your network. It's the quiet adult in the room preventing chaos while everyone else pretends redundancy is free. And once you understand what's going on and why, you design better networks, troubleshoot faster, and prevent outages instead of reacting to them. Like I did. <laughs> that is real networking. I hope that helped, and don't forget to follow me, you nerds.